All right, howdy folks, what's up? Welcome back. Got another little video, one I've been kind of meaning to do for a while. Uh, it's not gonna be as cool I was <laughs> I was hoping to do because still haven't really uh, spent the time to figure out some editing, but maybe I'll get some cool shooting footage of this guy later if I ever think about it. But I'm just gonna do a little rundown of my Noveski kit. Uh, it's the N4 Noveski kit for the MWS, obviously. And yeah, they've been really popular kits since they came out. You've probably already seen a, a bunch of them, but and um, but you know they're for good reason. Like you know they're they're beautiful. They look awesome. They're sexy. They work good. That's the most important part, right? No use having a gun that looks great and doesn't shoot good. So um, yeah, this is a nice add-on custom kit if you're looking to go that route for uh, NWS and do something different. Um, and, you know, one thing I always see, people will say, oh, I don't want to do this or do that because I see so many of them online. Well, that's online, man. Like, I, I guarantee, and, and who knows, you know, it depends where you live, what fields you go to, whatever. But uh, just because you see everyone doing something online, don't let that stop you if that's what you want to do. I mean, first of all, who cares? Second of all, um, I doubt you'll see that many in, in, real, in person, in real life, you know. I don't think I've seen another one of these yet, but I do kind of live where it's smaller airsoft groups and stuff but uh anyways um another thing i want to note is that evike has actually got some cool stuff in the works they are releasing their own clone version of mws i suppose and they're using this this body the noveski n4 um as their base looks like they have a couple versions one is well you know who knows they're not out yet but right now they're showing a price on their website as 350 and the other one at 550 i believe or 500 um <clears throat> which is you know a great price for something that has a kind of a cool look like this not just your base m4 it's it's obviously not going to be the same as this 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 kit is you know a custom build i did it's uh using a diatac diatac omg is the company that makes this kit and they're licensed by noveski and then i'm using you know uh, mws internals that you can either build up from the ground up or use a stock base gun as, as your as your donor gun, which I would recommend building from the ground up gets expensive real quick. It's not really worth it, especially if you've never done it before and don't know all the little bits and pins and screws that you might need. But anyways, that's interesting that Evike is making kind of a cheap MWS based rifle, um, you know, for 350, 500 bucks, I think. Well, you know, uh, 500 i don't know i'd honestly might just still get a real M toki marui mws at that price but uh hopefully it brings some more people into the gbbr game i think they're so much fun i love them it's honestly the only thing that's kept me interested in airsoft for all these years and uh so that's that's interesting development but i digress going back to this guy like i said this is made by Ditac. they got the license from noveski to get all these sexy trades grants pass oregon represent and um, what comes in the kit is essentially just your upper lower receiver, you know, your handguard. I think it's a 9-inch M-Lock rail, the 9.5-inch, you know, 300 blackout styled rifle, I'm um, sorry, barrel. Um, it's got that kind of, I don't know, aluminum type finish to it, which I think is actually pretty, pretty slick. But yeah, it's a lightweight aluminum barrel. And also comes with a gas block, which if you can see, but... It's got Noveski trades in there. Probably not going to be able to see it. Um, but yeah, it comes with a gas block. You're going to have to supply your own gas tube. And actually, if you notice mine, it's not set up right. The <laughs> gas block's supposed to be down here. Um, and I just need to chop down that gas tube and set it right. But I haven't gotten to it. It also comes with, you know, necessary hardware. So obviously the barrel nut and then the screws for that. It has a little kind of a barrel shroud that just it's kind of a barrel sleeve that fits into the upper that your barrel kind of locks into and they do use a kind of a proprietary buffer lock system for their receiver it's a little different than your stock mws one so you won't be that's one part you won't be switching over from your stock gun it also does come with um the takedown pins which is actually kind of cool I'll show you real quick if you can see but yeah, you got some little Noveski traded takedown pins there, which is nice because those can actually can be a kind of pain to source if you don't have them. So 
yeah, I'm just going to go tip the butt real quick, try to keep this short, I'll do like Grantham does, and left my Marine Corps buddies, but um, yeah, this is a, you know, again, <laughs> very basic, basic B uh, Noveski build here, nine times out of ten, you see them, they look just like this, so probably stuff you've all seen before, but I'll just run through it. I have a dead air mock suppressor here. This one's made by Angry Gun. Works good, locks up really nice, it's solid. Not going anywhere, haven't had a problem with that. It does have some trades, kind of see there. Um, yeah, that's it though. It doesn't say, doesn't have like the dead air trade, doesn't have the dead air logo. Oh, here you go, it does say dead air or cross Georgia. It doesn't have the logo on it though. There is another company that makes these that has the, the dead air logo, which would be cool. Didn't realize that when I bought this one, but it works fine and uh, also doesn't bother me too much. Moving back, we have on top, we have the Somo Gear NGAL. I love these things. Um, if you're using night vision and you need something to play yourself with at night, highly recommend these guys. I know they've been getting a lot of popularity lately. Excuse me, even on even in the real steel gun world, people are realizing, little known secret, these can handle these can handle recoil with a lot of real steel guns. So people are even using that for those. They hold zero is what that means. Uh, won't start shifting or busting on you. I've had pretty good luck with this one. Um, I do have their PEC-15 too, which I actually did have an issue with, but they're a great company to work with and they support their products. They, they do come with like a six month warranty. I was actually, my PEC-15 had an issue, pretty bad one. I could do another video on, but... Anyways, they took care of me, even though I was outside of warranty, so that's good to know. But I'll come back to that in a bit. So moving back to the build down here, we've got a Magpul AFG m -Lock grip, which I do like. Um, they're nice and slim. Just have a nice little place for your for your hand to go. And I kind of, I do like using these front bit as kind of a reference point with my forefinger there. And... Move back some more. Got a bad lever on here. I like to keep those on all my gas blowbacks for the most part. Uh, Magpul enhanced trigger guard. Magpul K2 Plus grip with the rubber overmold. One of my favorite grips. Up here and finish it off with the yeah, Magpul SLK stock. So pretty much all Magpul furniture there. This is uh, just a fake anti-rotation pin. Um, looks cool, but honestly, I think the reason I bought it is because I was missing, I kind of built this from scrap parts and I was missing the center pin for my trigger box. So I just picked this guy up for 10 bucks, comes with the center pin. So, and it looks cool. Uh, doesn't really do anything functionally, but it's a nice little add on if you want to do that, or if you're missing your center pin, that's a trick you can do if you can't find one. Guns Modify also sells a trigger box kit that would come with one too, though. Have a little ambi selector kind of cack style. I forget he makes that. Um, just a stock kind of standard flat receiver end plate. I don't really, I don't like, the, not a fan of the ones with the QD and the little sling hooks and all that stuff. I prefer to run my sling over here, so don't need all that. I like to keep it slick. They said SLK stock with a Magpul QD mount installed. They don't come with those. Uh, I have one here and I have one on the handguard for my sling. I guess it fits the Magpul theme, but I also really, really like these. They're only like 12 bucks, cheaper than a lot of others. <clears throat> and they're super thin, lightweight, aluminum, and they work. They have anti-rotation, anti so your sling won't spin endlessly and get all twisted up and jacked up, which is really annoying. Sling is actually made by Fat Pancake Gear. You can find him on uh, Instagram. And it's basically a slingster, like a ferro concept slingster type sling. He does use these kind of cool paracord pull tabs. And he does custom fabric. So I got this one in uh, AOR1. Got kind of fit the build nicely. Moving up top and back to front, I suppose, is a PTS Radian Raptor charging handle for the MWS. These don't take real steel charging handles. You got to get the you know, MWS specific ones, but these work really nice. They're built really well. Some stay away from anger gun <laughs> charging handles. You see like the pins there that hold on to the, uh, you know, the ambi wings there 
on the anchor gun, those are super thin and trash and they just fall out, at least on mine it did, sample size of one, but I've heard that from others too. Um, yeah, the PTS ones work great. Also, Z Parts, it's a good company for for these. I know Clone Correct would be uh, Geissley Airborne, I suppose, which I do have one on my other build, but um, I had this guy laying around and works for me. Uh, moving up, got a Clone Unity Flip to Center FTC mount hooked up to a Clone EOTech G33 which works fine for airsoft. I do have actually a re have this uh, real combo of this elsewhere and comparing, honestly, the QD works well enough. Um, everything is pretty solid. The action is definitely a bit stiffer on the fake one, but for, you know, a tenth of the price, I think I can live with that. And yeah, glass on the G33 versus the real one, obviously maybe not quite as nice, maybe a little bit tighter eye box or eye relief. Again, for a tenth of the price, it's fine for Airsoft. On the optic itself, I actually am using, <clears throat> this is actually a real Unity uh, high-rise mount, for T2 high-rise fast mounts, and a Holosun 403R, pretty much my go-to optic for Airsoft guns and even... Uh, and even what I recommend for like real stuff too because these just retail for 180 but you can get them used street price usually like used in brand new condition mine, mine are all beat up but I usually buy these for uh, like 125 I've got like four or five of them at this point and they're just great little optics um, night vision settings uh, day daylight settings all the way up to the 12 I you know where I live it's very bright full sun desert so you, I really need to have uh, something that has a bright, bright optic, bright dot. Clone optics just don't really cut it for me. So that's so why I stick with these. And they, like I said, yeah, work for night vision. I usually keep it on just setting one for night vision. And that's a pretty nice crisp dot under nods. Uh, paired with this high mount, makes it really easy. And the other thing is they just looked apart. You know, they got ruggedized aluminum housing. Got the capped uh, hooded turrets, just like a T2, a real Aimpoint T2, and kind of subdued black hollow sun trades. You know, I could you can black this out, or even if that if you have white trades, you can black that out using uh, using like a bluing pen. That'll take care of that. But yeah, great optics. So the 403R is just a simple two MOA dot, like a like a like an Aimpoint. They do have a 503R, which is about 100 bucks more retail, but that comes with a circle dot, like an EOTech type reticle, which I think would be cool. I actually haven't used, well, I've used one, but I don't, I don't have one, so I might pick up one of those next time. I think that'd be really nice, um, just in general, and especially under night vision. I love the EOTech reticles. So, yeah, I think I maybe forgot to mention I got a battle lever, oh, no, I think I did mention that. Um... And that's pretty much it externally. Internally, I do have these pins when I first installed this kit were super tight, but they worn, they'll wear it out after time. I do have installed a GMP gold trigger box. This one was pre-tuned by Run In Works back when they did that. I don't know if they still do. Uh, if you're gonna buy one of these, recommend getting the silver one because these gold ones are notoriously hard to tune. Mine, like I said, came pre-tuned and it's worked totally fine. But I know a lot of guys have had um, a hell of a time tuning these things. But it definitely is, you know, it's definitely a nice, nicer pull than stock. I'm not too much of a trigger snob, especially on airsoft guns. But that is a nice add-on. It was a pain in the ass to get in here. I had to squeeze that sucker in, but we got him in. And it's been working good. The stock, if you use just a stock MWS trigger box, that drops in really nicely. Back here, um, so this is that, oops, sorry, this is that buffer lock I was talking about. It's kind of proprietary to this kit. And as a little trick, if you do buy one of these kits, normally that is held in place by a screw in the rear, it's underneath your end plate. That holds it down a bit lower, and in what I was having was too low, and my buffer kept popping out every time I took open my split open the receivers like this. So a buddy actually told me a trick. He just removed that screw and screwed in his buffer tube further, and that actually captures it and holds it in place. 
similar to a real steel uh, on a real AR-15 or M4, that's how you would hold in your buffer lock, is actually by the buffer tube, not some screw in the rear. So yeah, that works great. Allowed this lock to rise up a little more, catch my buffer, kind of capture it in place better when I'm cracking up in the receivers. Right now I'm running, uh, this is actually a How lightweight bolt um, with GMP roller bolt in, which is pretty lightweight. This is set up for my winter use right now. So essentially with winter, you want a silicone bucking and then lightest system possible. So lightweight bolt system and lightweight buffer system. This is actually the stock plastic buffer just because they are the lightest buffer I think you can get and works good for winter. So that is it. Um, one other thing, I actually just kind of was messing with this morning. It's kind of cool. On the NGAL, I actually had this thing taped up on another gun, and when I pulled the tape off, it kind of ripped my my uh, little button here out. Those are just kind of glued in. So I need to pick up some super glue. In the meantime, I just ranger banded it, like ranger banded it like this. And it's actually pretty sweet because when you're working, you know, or playing or whatever at nighttime under night vision, you know, you're not really seeing, it's all, it's all feel and tactile movement in the dark, right? And sometimes I have had it where I'm kind of hunting around for that button a bit. It's obviously a training issue, something you can, you know, learn. But one thing is when switching, I also use PEC 15s. Um, and so on a PEC 15, the button is kind of more towards the rear here. And on the end gal, it's more towards the front. So sometimes it's just, you know, it happens when you're trying to get on the gun real quick or, you know, you just lose it for a sec. And adding this Ranger band actually adds a really nice tactile reference point. You know, it's just, boom, it's right there. You can feel it. You're not, you're not hunting around on the aluminum housing at all. And I think it's just always a good idea to have a consistent grip, have your consistent kind of reference points, um, you know, when presenting or whatever. For me, it's, you know, like I said, I kind of wrap my finger around the front end there, typically maybe run this underneath the peck like that. And then when I want to roll onto it, I just roll up top. Sometimes I run a flashlight and I tend to run that switch behind here, which kind of sucks. I got to break my grip. I don't really like this grip. Uh, could run a switch on the side, but then that might get accidentally charged. You know, there's always things to consider. But anyways, I like this little <laughs> Ranger Band mod. Uh, just makes it makes it uh, real easy to find where I need to be. So even when I glue this switch down, I might just keep this on there like that, honestly. But I thought I'd share that neat little, neat little hack, I thought. And, of course, this video ran about eight minutes longer than I wanted to. So, that's it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If you're interested in doing this build, I say go for it. It's it's one of the kits I can recommend. haven't tried them all, obviously. There are some cool ones coming out. There's always new stuff coming out for these things, which is one of the awesome parts about the platform. I know there's a LMT Mars kit coming out. Or it might even be out already, I think. Um, there's a couple of MCX kits coming out people are excited for, et cetera, et cetera. There's always some cool stuff coming out in these things. So yeah, enjoy your builds, guys. Happy building. If you have any questions, let me know. Real quick, also, I did add a permanent link to the MWS Discord. Well, really, it's technically the Tokimuri Gas Blowback Discord, but it's pretty much dominated by the MWS at this point. But I uh, added a permanent link to that in my profile, so you don't have to keep asking me for it. Click on that, should get you in there. You can look around at some sexy build pictures, ask some questions, figure out what parts you need for whatever you're doing. Uh, check the pins, always check the pins. It has a lot of good info already listed there. So you can save people uh, you know, asking the same questions over and over. But yeah, guys, get in there, have fun, do your thing. GBB life, baby. All right, take it easy, peace.